Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ said. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, Christ have mercy upon us. us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high, and on God earth peace, good will towards men. We, we praise thee, thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord your God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord your God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord, thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose blessed apostles Peter and Paul glorified thee by their martyrdom, grant that thy church, instructed by their teaching and example, and knit together in unity by thy spirit, may ever stand firm upon the one foundation, which is Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the same Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. For thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep, and I will seek them out, as shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a, on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the, from the countries and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel by the water courses and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak. But the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The psalm appointed for today is the 87th psalm, which is found on page 711, Psalm 87, which we'll recite together in unison. On the holy mountain stands the city he has founded. The Lord calls the gates of Zion, more than all the dwellings of Jacob. Glorious things are spoken of you. O city of our God, I count Egypt and Babylon among those who know me. Behold, Philistia, Tyre, and Ethiopia, in Zion were they born. Of Zion, it shall be said, everyone was born in her, and the Most High himself shall sustain her. The Lord will record as he in the rules of the peoples. These also were born there. The singers and the dancers will say, All my fresh strings are in you. A reading from the second epistle of St. Paul to Timothy. 
in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I solemnly urge you, proclaim the message, be persistent whether the time is favorable or unfavorable, convince, rebuke, and encourage with the utmost, per with the utmost patience in teaching, for the time is coming when people will not put up with sound doctrine, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own desires and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander away, away to myths. As for you, always be sober, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, carry out your ministry fully. As for me, I am already being poured out as a libation, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. From now on, there is reserved for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with God's spirit. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory be to thee, O Lord. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he had said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and to go wherever you wish. But when you grow old, you will, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you to take you where you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. After this, he said to him, follow me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise be to thee, O Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Well, today we celebrate the Feast of St. Peter and St. Paul, one of the great first feasts of the church year. And, um, on today, I'm, I'm reminded how often it is in our lives that we feel as though that things are left unfinished, incomplete, um, partial, um, like there's no end of whatever lies before us in sight. If that wasn't true before the last two and a half years of pandemic, I think it's certainly true now. I mean, not only have we, do we stand there and say to each other, will this pandemic ever come to an end? The appropriate answer seems to be, not really, we just have to get used to living with it. And so it's one more thing that just goes on and on and on. The more that we live in a service economy, the more it is that our, our own work always feels as though it's something that's never done because we don't make something, we don't build something. I mean, maybe you do, but I, I don't. You know, I, I'm here in my life, you know, today leads to tomorrow, tomorrow leads to the next day, and the next day leads to the next day. And there's some, there's a sense in which, well, uh, I mean, just ask Daniel when we finish, when we sort of wrap up one project and they never really seem to wrap up, and then we just move on to the next one because that's already been waiting and we just have to wait till we, we um, raise enough money to step on to the next project. Maybe, I mean, I'm thinking that your lives may be like this in ways too, it'd be different realities, but same dynamics where nothing ever gets done. You can't, it's what, you know, I like, I hate painting, but the one thing I'll say about painting your room is that when it's done, it's done. I mean, assuming you finish it. When it's done, it's done. You can stand back and look at the room and say, wow, that painting, that room is done. It's finished. It's painted. I did that. And then five years from now, you can say, well, I haven't done that. I did that five years ago. It's starting to look. Anyway, the, um, but um, so we have this sense of how difficult it is to complete something, to finish anything. And I think 
that St. Peter and St. Paul on their feast day have something to say to you. First of all, we have this well-known passage from St. Paul when he's writing to Timothy, when he says, I have finished my work. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. It's a remarkable thing to hear St. Paul say, I have finished my work. I mean, St. Paul was all over the place. I mean, literally, for St. Paul to be able to say, I have finished my work. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I am, I'm, he's, this is not his aspiration. This is, an, this is a statement of, uh, that he has done as much as he can do, that his work is as complete as it can be, and that he can rest in confidence in whatever Jesus has for him next. St. Peter, I think, is struggling with that when he has this conversation with Jesus in the 21st chapter of John's Gospel. Because what the, the frustration of the conversation with Jesus is, I think St. Peter could be saying, well, wait a minute, you know, do, you love, do you love me? Jesus says, do you love me? He says, yes, of course you do. Well, do you love me? Well, and I think, you know, St. Peter might be thinking, well, Jesus, I thought, like, I thought that part at least was done. The part where you knew that I loved you. At least that, but now I'm having this conversation with you and it's feeling to me, I'm gonna make eye statements here, Jesus, it's feeling that I feel as though, not you're making me feel, Jesus, I feel as though uh, this whole project of being in love with you, of loving you, of following you, is it, you know, is it not done? Is it not done? But um, there's hope, I think, because the work of, because Peter can decide that the work of feeding Jesus sheep is done when he's done enough of it. I think actually, in a way, Jesus is putting that into his hands. I don't think Jesus is telling Peter, you're never going to be done, you're never going to be done, you're never going to be done, unless, of course, the work is loving him. But you can feed my sheep, Peter, and at the end of the day, you actually will reach the end of the day. And it's okay to reach the end of the day. I mean, I'm adding a little bit of text here, let's all admit that, but I'm trying to make it work with my feet. So, uh, and I think you can get there. I think you can get there. The real purpose of reflecting on this, of course, isn't because Peter finished his work or Paul finished his work. But the real purpose of reflecting on this for both Peter and for Paul is because Jesus finished his work. And that's the thing that actually many of us struggle with. Like, Jesus, if you finished your work, why are things the way they are? Hard question to answer. And Jesus has a tendency of answering it by saying, well, do you love me? And we say, well, yes, of course, Jesus, you know that I love you, but do you love me? Yes, Jesus, you know I love you, but do you love me? And we get frustrated, don't we, just like Peter. Do you love me? Yes, Jesus, you know everything. You know that I love you. Well, feed my sheep. Well, does that project ever come to an end, Jesus? At the end of every day, it comes to an end. At the end of every single day, it comes to an end. And at the day that it comes to an end, and you need to be able to say, I have finished my work, I have fought the good fight, I have... I have finished my race, it's okay. It's okay, I think, with Jesus. And I've had to tell people in their lives, one of them quite recently, she's not listening to me, I might add, in her 97th year of life, that I think you've finished your work. And it's okay. It's possible to have finished your work. And the reason it's okay is because Jesus finished his work. The work of our salvation is accomplished. We don't always feel that way, but it is. And what we don't know about it now, we will probably find out about it on the other side of the grave. When exactly, I don't know. But that's where I expect to find out about it. Because Jesus has finished his work. We know he finished his work because A, he said so. B, he rose from the grave. C, he rose to, see, to take his seat at his Father's right hand. And we have the witness of the scriptures and of the whole church to tell us that, that Jesus has finished his work. And that when we are feeling harried, frustrated, and unfinished and unable to finish our work, Jesus says, I know, I know, I know, but do you love me? And then we find yet another reason to feel harried and frustrated. And Jesus says, but do you love me? And then we feel another feeling, we get, feel frustrated again. And he says, look, just feed my sheep. And remember, that even St. Paul, really one and all over the world, knew that the time had come when he had finished 
his work. He had finished his race. He had fought the good fight, and it was time to stop. Your work can come to an end. You can have a rest. We are not going to be in an endless merry-go-round of the pandemic and of the construction projects and of rebuilding the church and everything forever. Jesus has already finished his work. So somewhere this is leading to something. Maybe it's leading to heaven when we get there. Maybe it's leading, leading to the kingdom of God before you or I get there. Or at the same time. I mean, who knows how, the, how all that time is going to come together. But I think that there is a possibility in, on this feast of Peter and Paul of hearing Jesus reassure us in the face of all that unsettles us, all that feels unfinished, all that feels incomplete, all of our work that we feel we can never get done, all of the sense that we're on this constant round that never stops and we'll never be able to sit back, stand back and say, oh, I have fought the good fight. Yes, you can. You can do it today and take up a new piece of work tomorrow if you want to. Or not, if that's where you are. Jesus has finished his work. Peter and Paul finished their work. You and I will finish our work someday. And until then, the most important thing we can do is love Jesus and feed his sheep. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Now let us stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things physical and invisible, and the one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God, Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures and ascended into heaven and sit on the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with the glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who is faith by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Catholic apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and the world. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications, and to give thanks for all men, receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Daniel, our bishop, and Britt, Nora, Stephen, Nicholas, and Gordon, my priest brothers and sisters who worship and work in this place and parish, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially Joe, our president, the members of the Congress and the courts, 
Tom our governor, and Jim our mayor, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that, rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who are sick with the coronavirus, all doctors and nurses and others who care for those in need, all those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, who are struggling for justice that's been denied, and who are working to bring about an end to the sin of racism in our hearts and in our society, and all those beloved of this parish community who are sick or in need, especially remembering Chris, Sue, George, John, Homer, Mary Jane, Marlene, Marguerite, Mark, Ira, Judith, Nick, Wes, John, Joan, Marilyn, Bryce, Audrey, Joanne, Alex, Rodney, Daniel, Jeff, Howard, Rob, Martha, Margaret, Richard, Margaret, Jeremy, Chris, and all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. We pray as always for peace in our time, for an end to the war in Ukraine, for an end to warfare, violence, oppression, and the threat of terrorism everywhere, for an end to the political divisions that so tear this nation apart, for an end to the gunfire in the streets of this city. And we also bless thy holy name, for all thy servants depart this life in thy faith and fear, especially remembering all those who died from the coronavirus in the past day, and all those whose lives have been taken from them in acts of war and violence in recent days. Beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace, so to follow the good examples of the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, of blessed Mark, the Evangelist, of blessed Paul, Peter and blessed Paul, and of all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most seriously have committed, by thought, word, and deed, against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly by our act in indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our disputes. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter Serve and please thee in the goodness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with heart of repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit. Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and make good your vows to the Most High. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation. Of your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. 
bless thee, God, God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Of your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed is the God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that this, my sacrifice and yours, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord receive this sacrifice in thy hands, to the praise and glory of his name, both for our good and for that of all his holy church. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, through the great shepherd of thy flock, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who, after his resurrection, sent forth his apostles to preach the gospel and to teach all nations and promised to be with them always, even unto the end of the ages. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thy only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, 
having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness, vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching me to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee, that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us, and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have and mercy on us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord. Trust me in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as the other of the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him that takest away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. The body. The body of Christ. Okay. The body. 
body of Christ, the bread of life. The 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 body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the cup. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the cup. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 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 Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we, we most heartily thank Thee, for that Thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries, with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of Thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members corporate in the mystical body of Thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs to the hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship, and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom we believe and the Holy Ghost, be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. May all the angels and arch archangels that guard and protect you, may Mary, the mother of God, pray for you. May St. Peter and St. Paul and all the saints pray for you. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.